Hey everybody, so here's an update on the uh, latest repair effort. Um, I'm going to get out of the way of the camera here so everybody can see the important stuff. This is the cockpit area. Here's a, uh, um, here's a cap stringer that I've, that I've uncovered back here. And the reason we've gone into this area, as mentioned before, uh, the damaged upper fairings, the uh, rotted out areas, everything was, was removed. And moving in here to this corner in an attempt to um, tie all of this together uh, to strengthen the, the structure so this doesn't uh, crack out again. Um, I had planned to cut back this this area and put in a large scarf and continue with a single piece of plywood all the way back to the next plywood skin. And of course, uh, we get into these things and um, they're generally not as simple as uh, one would initially think, but that's part of the learning process. So moving on here, um, usually when I get into this boat, I find a smorgasbord of random stuff. I removed the uh, the wheel pedestal here a couple days ago. I had four different types of hardware and manufactured nuts and all sorts of random stuff holding this down. And I get in here into this deck structure and while there are things that have been done that are specified in the design, there are other things that are quite random. Um, and leave me scratching my head as to what to do next sometimes. But you can see there was a step here where the deck transitioned from a, a half cord, half plywood uh, infill deck section that met an area back here with the Genoa winch with a doubled layer of, of plywood with a net thickness of of an inch to 12 millimeter layers that were just really badly laminated together. Um, I had a quarter inch gap on one side whenever I took it out and coming over here we find more interesting stuff. This area really is a composite. Um, I don't know if it's the kind that a person would would want or that the designer would intend but here we have a cap stringer and here we had a step with a very thin uh, eighth inch plywood skin that was lamin laminated over top of a 12 millimeter plywood fill block that as far as I can tell was curved with some sort of really, really beefy saw. Um, something with a serious, serious curve to the blade and laminated on um, in a fairly haphazard manner. You can see the, let me get back here where the focus is a little better. You can see the sparse legs of epoxy. This was an area of, of non-contact. These areas were bonded together. The ply layers separated before the, uh, before the bond did. And this is uh, a layer of triaxial fiberglass um, and moving over here, we transition back into foam, uh, PVC foam with some triax on top. Um, coming down over this cap strip with some bog in here and, and what was a really, really weak butt joint, I was able to break that out with my hand once I had, once I had cut, made a cut here on the adjacent side. Um, and then we go back into a, a doubled layer of plywood so there's a lot of different stuff here that's just been kind of thrown together and I'm going to go back tonight and consult with the design oracle read the blueprints and go through the construction manual um, very carefully as to how to proceed um, but Man, oh man, my insides are telling me one word right now, and that's, that's balsa. 
Um, I have no problem putting a large oversized epoxy annual eye in every hole. It's, it's a sound construction practice should be done no matter what material you core with. But it really seems like with the, with the good compressive properties, with the good properties, the good compressive strength of balsa, um, just being able to go across this entire area with a, with a light material and tie this all together all the way out across there and sheathe the whole thing with either triax or cover it all with three millimeter plywood and six ounce cloth. Um, the latter being my preference mainly because I really don't like glass that much, but who knows, maybe this will, uh, maybe this will bring, bring a little bit of light to the ignorant. Um, this is my first time dealing with, with a cord structure. I've always worked with exclusively with, with plywood panels. So this should be, uh, should be educating. All right, everybody. Um, that's all I have for now. And well, if nothing else, we managed to get the uh, pile of styrene and chop strand mat off of a little bit more of the deck, and that's always a good thing. So, until next time, that's all I have. And uh, best of luck to anybody out there who's who's dealing with something like this. Hit me up if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities, point you in the direction of somebody more knowledgeable who can.